Many people know about the Jamaican beef patty, but not a lot of people know about the Jamaican meatloaf. It's like a cocoa bread stuffed with the same filling you'd get in a beef patty. Let's get started on it. So for the dough, I'm going to be using active yeast, and that's what I'm going to be adding here to some warm milk. And I'm adding sugar right there as well. We're going to stir all of this together and allow that yeast to activate. So I'm going to cover this and set it aside and allow it to activate. So once it's foamy and frothy, we are good to go. Now I'm going to work on the dry ingredients. I have flour in this bowl, just some all-purpose flour. You can use bread flour. I added salt and now I'm whisking it together. If you're using instant yeast, you can add it here. I just added some sugar and I am whisking it in as well. Now the choice is yours. You could do this dough by hand or you could use your mixer with your big bowl and your dough arm or dough hook. So I'm going to be using the mixer today. I have the flour and the other dry ingredients and I'm adding now some room temperature melted butter. Then I'm going to go in with a beaten egg. And then in goes that yeast and coconut milk mixture. Then all we need to do is turn this on low speed allow that dough to come together once it comes together then you can turn it up to medium to high speed while mixing the dough remember to pause and use a spatula just to scrape down the sides so everything can be mixed properly and you're just going to keep kneading the dough until it is soft once the dough comes together, I oil my hands instead of using flour and then I'm just going to remove it from this bowl. In this glass bowl, I have brushed some olive oil and I'm just going to form, you know, a loose ball with this. And then we're going to be allowing this to proof. So fold it into itself just to make a ball and then make sure the top of that ball has some oil on there. We're going to cover this up and allow it to proof for about 45 minutes to one hour. If your kitchen is already very warm, you don't need to find somewhere warm to put this. Just leave it on the counter. Allow the dough to rest and double in size. And then I'll show you the filling. For the filling, one of the ingredients is some soft breadcrumbs. I don't purchase those dry gritty breadcrumbs i just put some slices of bread in a magic bullet or i grate them to get the crumbs and then i add water or beef broth then you're gonna blend it to get this smooth liquid which will thicken the filling later on for the filling i have oil in my nonstick pan and i'm going to be browning this ground beef so you want to loosen the meat you want to uh, break it up and then we are going to be adding some seasoning. Once I manage to loosen up the ground beef, then I add some seasoning. You could use oxtail seasoning, beef seasoning, or a beef seasoning cube. This is just a beef seasoning cube I crushed and I'm adding some ground allspice. Depending on what beef seasoning you use, then you're gonna add some black pepper to taste. Now, one thing about this filling is it has to be very flavorful. So we have to add some freshness as well. So I have some minced red pepper. I have green onions and white onions. Those are diced really finely and we're gonna stir these in along with some other good stuff. So here is some green seasoning, which is a blend of aromatics and herbs. Then I'm adding some scotch bonnet. Make it as spicy as you like. Right here, I have some minced fresh thyme. Please use fresh thyme. So just stir all of this together. And of course, we're gonna go in with more ingredients.
once all of these fresh ingredients are fragrant and your meat is no longer red we're gonna add that breadcrumbs and water mixture now how much you add depends on how thick or how runny you want the filling to be you're gonna add some soy sauce then we'll go in with some browning this is like burnt sugar burnt caramel we use it in Caribbean cooking a lot for color and then some grace fish and meat sauce or if you prefer you could use pica pepper sauce that's another Jamaican um, flavorful sauce you can use and then just mix all of it together add some more water if you need to and add more of the sauces and the browning if you need to now when it comes to texture of the filling feel free to pulse it in a food processor briefly just to refine the texture more if you want to okay if you're not in the mood to go all the way and do that then just cool your filling down on a wide surface while the filling is cooling down check on the dough and then we're gonna just punch it down just to deflate it to get rid of that excess air so that's what we're gonna move on to right now while the filling is cooling down also remember guys if you want to you can do the filling way before the dough and then it will be cooled and ready to go all right so we're just gonna punch down the dough and then remove it from the bowl once you remove it from the bowl you're gonna be kneading it just a few times you know just fold it into itself just to deflate it even more just remember that we did a lot of kneading initially in the mixer so at this point we're really you know mostly just deflating the dough just roll it into a ball and then you're gonna cut the pieces you can do about eight or you could do 10 it depends on you know how large you want these meatloafs to be so my dough is cut into eight pieces this time remember you can do more if you want to and you want to oil or flour your hands so the dough doesn't stick to everything then it's time to fold it into itself because we're trying to form some balls okay so pinch it and roll it into a ball once all of the pieces are rolled then we'll let them rest for about eight minutes So plastic wrap goes on so these don't dry out let them rest and then it's time to roll them flat so keep the other ones covered while you work okay so grab one of the dough balls and use your rolling pin or a clean bottle or your hands just to roll it flat the next step is to put your cooled down filling in the center how much filling you use is really up to you okay I don't like when it's too much filling. I like a good balance of that soft dough along with the filling. So put that in there, leave some space at the edges, and then you're gonna wet your finger, go around the edges, and we'll seal it up. once you've added the water to the edges and you have your filling in there fold it over and then it's time to seal so what i do is i press it with my fingers and then i go in with a pastry crimper or a fork use what you have at home it'll still turn out delicious okay so don't go spending money on a pastry crimper if you don't have it just use a fork so I just use the pastry crimper. I'm gonna show you what I do with the fork.
For this last piece of dough, I just wanted a cocoa bread. So after I rolled out my circle, I just brush on some butter. You can brush it all over or brush it on one side, fold it over and don't seal it. Just leave it like that and I'll put it on the tray with the meatloaf. For color, I am going to be brushing on some milk, okay? So brushing it all over the top. And then we're going to be baking this in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 to 30 minutes on the middle rack of the oven. And here are our delicious meat loaves and cocoa bread guys. They look so good. We just need to cool them down briefly, you know, just lay them on a wire rack. And then I'm going to brush some melted butter all over. Or you could just take a piece of butter and rub it on the top of each meatloaf or cocoa bread. This is going to keep it nice and soft so it doesn't dry out and it's going to taste amazing traditionally we serve these hot the same way we would serve a jamaican beef patty so as soon as that butter goes on serve that up and enjoy it when you purchase a meatloaf in jamaica at any restaurant they're going to give it to you in a paper bag but i'm just showing you guys what this looks like so i have it in a bowl but we don't normally eat it that way all right so this is very soft it is gorgeous it is just look at that glossy meat filling inside the color is perfect the flavor is on point and remember what i said about the texture if you want to refine the texture some more go ahead and pulse it in your food processor or blender briefly these are delicious you can store them in your freezer or your fridge and reheat them whenever you want Give this a try guys, it is absolutely tasty. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, bye bye.